way, way, way more influential, like, what build order you go for. And he actually managed to get, like, a really decent result. I think, like, top eight or top four or something in the ASL, which was insane. But, yeah, you Thermal, he's, he's a scary, scary fish, man. Like, before he became a Terran player, he was a Protoss player. And speaking of, spawning over in the bottom left of Alcyone over here, it is you Thermal. And up right from the Shopify Rebellion, our blue Zerg is Lambo. It's actually so scary going up against a random player. Especially, I think especially with Zerg, because there's so many situations where it's like, <laughs> you know, you can die to a 12 pool if you're too greedy. You can die to like proxy two Rex if you're too greedy. Even like, I, I know that Euthermal's not afraid of cannon rushing either. There was that moment at Home Story Cups where he was still professional. Mm -hmm. I think still competing for Team Liquid, and he was just cannon rush, he, like, cannon rush Smoot out the tournament. I think. Yeah, and his teammate. <laughs> yeah, like there's there's a lot of brutal moments. So Lambo here is going for a very safe opener, I'd say for the most part. Like pool first, hatchery on the low ground, obviously on the low ground. But yeah, this is this is a fun one because both these guys. In, in character, they're both confident human beings. They both play with, I think they both still do, very high mouse sensitivity. They're both very, very good players. Uh, Lambo more on the macro side, and Euthermal very much on the micro side. And yeah, it's, it's always fun between these two, and it looks like it will be a high ground CC from Euthermal, which is interesting against Zerg, but against a pool first, it's kind of the perfect choice. I think there's just a a knock-on effect, right, where Lambo's like, well, he's playing random, so I'm going to pool first in case of all these things that you mentioned. And you then was like, oh, well, Lambo's smart. He's, I know he's playing Zerg, so he's probably going to open pool first, you know, in case of all this stuff. So I'm just going to open with the high ground CC and just be very safe, not have to worry early. And uh, obviously now Lambo knows this Overlord does see the Reaper leaving onto the map. So now Lambo knows what's up. Like we say, with the high ground CC, you're going to be very safe there as you thermal, and you don't have to pull this Reaper back against those Lings, because you can just wait until your reactor and factor are done, I believe. Yeah, definitely. Like, and and let, let's be let's be real. Like, the pressure's more on Lambo here. Like, you thermal has been very consistent about selling himself as retired for a long time, as you know this memer for a long time. It, both of those things, even before he actually did officially retire. Uh, and Lambo, he's a, a well-respected player for the Shopify Rebellion, which is um, by no means a, a small team in StarCraft 2 now. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, an interesting one. Uh, this game, the pool first, obviously doesn't really get too much done. Does get confirmation on what he's up against. Uh, and gets to... Did he get to see that there was a CC on the high ground? I dare say he did. It was pretty damn close, but he's going to know most likely what's up here. Yeah, he did get to see the CC, so CC is confirmed. And uh, obviously that is good information I have, known that that is there. And do you have the barracks coming over? That's going to provide high ground vision, which allows you to kill this overlord. That does obviously slow down production for a bit, and there's a fusion core from you, Thermal. So if you're wondering what kind of style he's going to play, well, there you go. Fusion core goes down, BC set up to start herself. Not the most popular way of playing lately, so definitely a little bit of a spanner in the works compared to what we're expecting. Uh, definitely is. Definitely is. Uh, a lot of Hellions on the map gets to clean up that Overlord as well. And Zergs very often, they don't scout with two Overlords these days, just because if you do and your opponent goes for a Viking, well, you're in trouble. And these Hellions, this Reaper, they're okay. most likely a one-way trip here. And a little bit of drone damage so far. Oh, that next and shot up. was good. And boy, seven drones for his trouble. I tell you what. Euthermal is looking at that and definitely okay with that outcome. Yep, Ling Speed just not done, so the Lings are lacking in, in how well they can defend. And so we do get in, we get some damage done. I think you're very right. I think Euthermal is very okay with how that goat turns out. I do see the Battle Cruiser coming up, the couple of Hellions are coming out, SCV and the Debo coming in as well. I was just drop another inject or so. So Lambo on the road to recovery, but of course, we're on the way to this BC and Lambo is prepping to some extent, getting the spores up and getting them behind the mineral lines. So that's actually okay against the BC based on where it teleports in. Those spores in general definitely feel like kind of anti-liberator spores so that they're reaching where the liberators might siege up. With the BC, you're likely going to have to relocate the spores anyways because the BC is going to move past wherever the spore would be. Yeah, the only thing they're not is anti-Banshee spores, right? Yeah. Um, just because you want those in your mineral lines, but your thermal behind this, getting the third CC on the go really hunkering down on the hellion and this is this is starting to 
be very tricky for Lambo to find out what he's up against here, because it could still be anything. It could be mech. Like, y you just don't know. And right now, uh, the best unit to make a lot of is Queens, and luckily Lambo will be up to a good seven or so. But the BC's out. And yep. uh, he's just going right on these Queens. And there's only four here in the mix. All the Lings are dead as well. This is... This is very <laughs> problematic here, Wardy. Yeah, this is really rough. Two queens go down. Now the Hellions uh, kind of realize, hey, we could have had some oh, drones here, and they will go for some drones. Five more workers going down. A spore is finally in reach of this battle cruiser, but the queens have to go running to the spore for the extra backup. We're still going to get some more drones here, depending on what the Hellions can shoot. No, the Lings are going to stop them. As you're going to be seeing this BC around the right-hand side is also just going to stay away. 76 to 63 supply after all of this. I mean, not a bad stuff for Ethan, because also he's following up with Bio. If he was following up with Mech, I'd be like, ah, well, you know, this damage, you know, Mech takes a while to get going, so it's whatever. With a Bio follow-up that hits a crisp timing, damage like this really adds up. It can really hurt. This is the kind of game that, you know, you're like, Grandma, do you want to watch some StarCraft with me? And she's like, yeah, of course I do. And then you tune in and it's like, this is absolutely awesome. Like, Battlecruiser just coming in, Hellions. <laughs> Spire on the go as well. If you're Lambo right now, yeah, and you know, you see everything that's happening in this game, I think Spire is like the one thing that you don't want to be going for. Because there's going to be 1-1 one, one bio out very yeah. quickly with soon to be, what's this? going to be like eight barracks on the go as well. Yep. I, I think that is definitely going to be problematic. And the reason being, Muters, because it is most likely going to be Muters, they want to keep the opponent at home. They do. And the way that Euthermal's playing, he doesn't want to be anywhere else than parading across the map in your base. This is going to be very, very, very difficult for him. 1-1 one, one upgrades against 0-0 zero, zero as well because those Eva chambers are just now starting. I mean, Euthermal's going to have a terrifying timing. And you know he can execute. We know he's got the micro to, you know, you know split well and micro properly. So this is terrifying for Lambo. He is in trouble. His work account is not brilliant. His upgrades are late. His army is not necessarily what you want it to be. I mean, he just finished the Spire and he doesn't even have really money left over to spend on anything because... Oh no, he cancels the Spire. Okay, so he just decides not to go for it, which is a, the right choice. He doesn't need it anymore because the Battle Cruise account never increased further. So he's now just going to play Ling Bane against this 8 racks. Good call by Lambo. And it's a pretty hard one to make as well because if you were against Mech, which I think is what he thought it might be, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you know, getting the if it's more battle cruisers or more Hellions, then you have a pretty good idea of what it is. But I think it, some way he made a good read here that it is going to be bio and just honkers on down to Ling Bane. He's going to try and get up to about eighty odd drones as well. But it's way easier said than done because right now his Lings they don't deal the damage that he's really hoping they can deal. Yeah. This is nice, man. Another queen going down. Just a little bit to harass with the BC, right? Keeps the queens out of position so they can't help against the drop play. Just nice little things. We're actually going to teleport over here and support this drop now with the BC as well. So just cute stuff. And this is a fifth hatchery that may very well just go down very quickly. And that is a big deal as well, right? Just going to be able to grab this and slow down Lambo's production because that's not going to be as much lava available. And Lambo actually supply blocked off the back of that as well. And we are, again, 15 Marines at a time in production, 2-2 two, two on the way from Euthermal. The upcoming timing is still absolutely terrifying. This Battlecruiser's got itself up to 19 kills right now. And granted, a lot of it is, well, actually, I think quite a bit of it is Queens, a lot of Zerglings as well. Oh, doesn't have Blink oh, available, though. Yeah, so that's dead. maybe their first misstep of the game for Euthermal. But everything else is lined up very nicely, and... Yeah, you said it. 15 Marines at a time for you, Thermal. A lot of tanks back home, and my goodness. 1-1 one, one is about to finish up for Lambo here, but he's a minute off being behind in upgrades, and yet again, against a massive Terran army. Yep, army supply already in you, Thermal's favor. Lambo's trying to go up to Hive, which is just a big stretch right now. You know, that's not going to help you in the immediate future. A couple of Infestors would have a better chance of helping you right now, but I wouldn't have loved that either. I mean... Let's see as the Ling Bane starts to run through the center here. The tank's not all siege, so the front tank's going to be in a bit of trouble, but they do buy time. They tank a couple of shots off those Lings, right, and give the time for the Marines just to do damage. So it feels very good for you, Thermal, to start off with as he's dropping back on that right-hand side, wants to keep on trading with these Lings, and just again pulling Lambo back, distracting him, keeping him busy. This is looking very good for you, Thermal, man. I just got to keep saying it. As 2-2 kicks in, his trades are going to be even better. 
They really are. I, it's so many Marines on the field, man. Like, this is... Oh my goodness. That is a moment to pause, if I've ever seen one, Wardy. Like, <laughs> we're, seeing, we're seeing Bailings charge in. <laughs> an, oh my goodness. Yeah, that is... Uh, that is an unfortunate timing, I've got to say. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, oh, okay. So Euthermal's saying that he, it's probably one of those freeze frame moments for him. That is that is unfortunate. Unfortunate to say the least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to say, like, <laughs> Lambo really sums it up. You're unseaged and I'm rolling into you. So uh, a moment here as we uh, figure this out. Looks as though we're going to go play the recovery game, which will just take a minute or so to sort out, waiting for our referee to obviously sort this for us, but it looks like we're probably going to be coming out oh, wait, we'll just be a moment then, we'll come out of this and give it a couple moments while we wait for these guys to get this game number one resumed in a little bit I gotta say, that is very nice of Lambo to offer that mm -hmm. it wasn't Euthermal asking for it I, I'm almost, I'm a bit surprised that Euthermal wasn't like, oh that was really nice of you man, that'd be really, really uh, swell, because I, uh, yeah, uh, offering that in that kind of situation, uh, very, very nice, Alambo. No, absolutely, man. I mean, just, I mean, it's obviously a big moment as well where Alambo's been in trouble, and that could have been his catch, but yeah, obviously wants to play a, a fair game as we wait for this get rehosted. It just takes a moment as well because, so the way that it works when we rehost a game like this is first you've got to get everyone invited, and then you've got to actually play it. Essentially, the game runs through the replay. Now, this wasn't a super long game, but still going to just take a minute minute or two so uh just a few moments while we get this and obviously for youth thermal we have to wait for him to sort out whatever he's going to do to the internet as well so definitely a very tempo based game though to say the least like this is all lining up for this moment for youth thermal isn't it like two two done very much a parade push kind of thing the, the, like if there is a next step for him it's getting three three on the go but it's very much all lined up for this. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely a brutal situation. Yep, no, we will uh, get resumed then. So just a moment or two. And we'll get this uh, sorted out. And, uh, just invite everyone in for a couple of moments. <laughs> I, I, I'm still laughing. I, I've got like the stream open up my second monitor and uh -huh. it's, it's just as funny the second time like this <laughs> is an unfortunate timing it really is yeah it was definitely a uh <laughs> definitely an unfortunate moment as we yeah just, and still I, I haven't seen mark say i haven't seen mark say like oh thanks bro or <laughs> i'm still surprised oh <laughs> <sighs> all right so, um, to, to be fair, there was one time that I two racked Scarlet when she accidentally made a spawn made this, pool first. They, oh, I thought you meant no, oh, they made uh, an Evo uh, chamber. Evo, yeah. Evo chamber, yeah. And you know, I let her, uh, I let the regame happen. Then I lost two zero. <laughs> but you know, then she she didn't say thank you or anything. She just went to interviews afterwards and was like, "Oh yeah, I beat him all the time anyway." And I was just like, "What the <laughs> frick?" I, I remember being. I remember that moment. I was so like, "Oh my goodness, the shame of these people!" You know, these good gestures just being met Going with unnoticed, folded arms. Like, oh my, absolutely brutal. All right. Well, we have successfully restarted. We will be about thirty seconds or so, and we'll be back on track. And so it was about ten minutes in game. And we'll be uh, ready to go back into this one where Euthermal was looking obviously good, but you know it still comes down a lot to these fights and obviously need to be sieged up in the right places and all the rest of it. So we'll see how this goes. Couple moments. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling that it's not a good situation for Lambo, is it? It really isn't. Like no. he's absolutely he needs time, which Euthermal isn't giving him. And we'll see, we'll see, because they've, they've both seen what happened five seconds on from this situation, so I'm going back in time. You film on nose, Lambo's ready to pounce. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of... Uh, Mind games. There's a lot of mental going on uh, in, in this little bit of downtime here for both of them. Yep, well, fortunately, it's not going to take too much longer. We are pretty much right there. The loading screen is it feels so slow, man, when you're sitting waiting for it, and you're just like, go on, go on, fill up. <laughs> 
get that load of the screen filled up and we can go go this is one thing that makes me appreciate starcraft 2 though like yeah. even in other major esports titles it's like even cs they had a moment where like a player's computer crashed on lan and you can't replay the round or anything and you just have to keep on going and it's just like oh my goodness thank goodness for starcraft yep well here it is so this is the position right where you've got th this army here tanks trying to come up and he thermal does uh essentially retreat away so he's just going to back up towards the siege tank reinforcements and he's just going to try and find a slow push forward his 2-2 just now finishes as well so he definitely did not want to fight before this moment from here on out it's okay to fight because he's got an upgrade lead for the next minute or so he really does and <clears throat> The way that he's playing it as well, this is kind of like, um, I remember Cure pulling out this style where you start adding Liberators to the mix as well, which really make this so much more difficult to play against, you know? Like, it's just a, a whole different ball game, but this tank spread here, this positioning, there aren't a lot of tanks, but there's 90 Marines on the field. There's almost as many Marines as there are Zerglings, and the fight is going to happen. Remember, Lambo does not have an upgrade advantage. He's got a lot of units situated, not in this fight right now. They're going to try and come behind now, but is it too late? There's so much Zerg here, Wardy, on the field, and Right now, all the tanks are absolutely offline, but the amount of Marines that are still left behind... But I think Lambo has got himself out of a lot of trouble there. Yeah, I think that was a good enough fight. We've got some barracks that are floating about. A little bit of a mistake there. Euthermal trying to build up into additional bases beyond all this. Um, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like those barracks were meant to reload. Oh, I see. Oh, God. Oh, that's sad. That's, that's bad, man. Those tanks were meant to be in the fight previously. So that's where splash damage oh, was. And that means that that's actually a big deal, as now Lambo, it just oh, no. prolongs his chances in this game, right? And now he's going to be able to catch this army. And yeah, you thermal. The tanks blocked in is absolutely brutal for him. Yeah, maybe a bit too much random and not enough Terran. But I tell you what, having all those tanks back at home, if they were sieged, it would have been really good. I mean, maybe it's still okay for making sure he doesn't die to this counterattack. Lambo probably running in there being like, what the frick? Why do you have so much back here? But... Ah, I mean, Lambo, he, he's done a good job of just kind of grappling with this game because it's not being an easy one. And these Lings, they are still getting lots of damage done here. Yeah, it feels like you've almost fallen apart a little bit, honestly. Like, I, I, you know, just the tanks not being there and then he's he's got them and just suddenly now not dealing with the Lings properly. Too many, uh, a few too many mistakes in a row right now and Lambo definitely retaking control. And he's also, because he survived through the 2-2 timing, Obviously, his own upgrades caught up. He's about to get adrenal glands. That hive tech is here. The power, say, bomb off a viper, but also ultras. Something that you thermal is not amazingly set up to deal with right now. Yeah. When these guys used to duke it out, I remember so many games of them playing. As soon as a ultra came out in the field, you thermal GG. <laughs> like, <laughs> so <laughs> many games. Like, so many games. And right now, you thermal. He's absolutely on the back foot here. Lambo's weathered the storm. He's in great shape. Uh, Liberator's going to be annoying in the back of the base here. But this timing, everything that's set up to it, that is the most random place for those barracks ever. I was going to say, I don't feel like that's where they were meant to relocate and build that stuff, but uh, okay. <laughs> you, you know, it, it's one of those where you rally all your buildings where your barracks are still floating. And just wherever they are, you're like, you know what? Screw it. Like, I'm, I'm on the clock here. Just put down whatever add-on I have, because even though all your other buildings will rally, they'll fly. <laughs> yeah, I guess what? so. No, oh, you know, you're right, man. Just put it down. Uh, you're just, just laughing, because I'm like, this happened to me so much. Like, I can just <laughs> thoroughly relate. Yeah, it, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you just plonk it, man. You just plonk, plonk it, it. And Okay, okay. So Lambo hasn't started his 3-3 upgrade just yet, but Adrenal Glands is done. Plus three carapace starts. He's got chitinous plating for those ultras as well. Oh boy, this has been a, a firework of a game, and that's a lot of Zerg marching on in. And it's not as if Lambo's economy is great, but I think he knows that he's done quite a bit of damage to you, Thermal here. That you can do this, and GG, you know, uh, nice game out of Lambo there. Absolutely pulled it back. Yep, very nicely done. GG's indeed, and that is going to be Lambo. Taking the first game, just uh, really was able to keep his cool and keep his uh, you know composure when things were looking tough and was in the end able to get the victory off the back of that because it definitely was not looking good for him at certain points. So it was important to keep himself going in that regard. 
Yeah, uh, fun game though. Fun game. Like one of the more fun games that we've seen today in terms of just uh, interesting opener and yep. more random to come as well. Like it was the matchup I was looking forward to. I must admit today, just seeing these guys duke it out again. And yeah, uh, gotta gotta say again, massive uh, kudos for Lambo for just being like, yeah, let's let's go for the regame. Maybe he was feeling that his situation wasn't as bad as uh i i was kind of thinking um but again having all those tanks stuck in the base definitely um put a lot less muscle in that push than what might have been very very true as we get ready for round two obviously the exciting part of this now is that this is still random and we thermal right we don't know what the next matchup is even gonna be so we just had some CVT, now we might have some CVZ or some CVP. I don't think you thermals actually spawned in as Zerg in the event yet, in this tournament, so... I, uh, I think he's been Prolos and Terran only. So we'll see if this is maybe the time for Zerg to pop up. I, I do think Zerg is actually the worst case scenario for him. I think CVZ is just not it, so we'll see. It's, it's one of those that playing Zerg against somebody that's played Zerg... I want to say like a thousand times more than you have always feels rough you know it's 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 tough but as far as as far as build order choices and what have you but you do tend to find that like terrans and Protoss can sometimes play the other race he's got terran again by the way that's uh, very fortunate um but you tend to find that terrans play Protoss well Protoss has played terran badly but whenever they all play Zerg, they all play pretty badly. You know, it's, it's, it's just it's just one of those things. It's a different kind of way of playing StarCraft, man. Yeah, it's it's so damn different. So damn different. But it will be Site Delta here. Second map here between the man spawning over in the bottom right as our Red Terran. It is Euthermal. And the top left, it is going to be our blue Zerg. It is Lambo. Oi, oi, it's not me, right? Referee B, is it? Oh, <laughs> the you thermal. Oh. All right, well. Well, well, Wardy. At least it's the start of the game Ta this time. Yeah, time to tell me about Pokemon, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to tell you about Pokemon, mate. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, if you're going to disconnect, this is a better time to do it. That phone data, obviously, uh, not quite didn't working. do him any favors over here. Yeah, not quite, not quite, you know. Yeah, it turns out uh, the internet data was, was not the play. All right, looks as though we're going to have a full <laughs> drop here, so I'm assuming this is just going to be a re-host. You obviously do have to recover from replay because the race has been picked and everything, so this will be another recover replay situation. We'll uh, go, go into round two of this matchup very soon. Just battling the internet demons right now. You film was like, hold on a minute. I might not last all three maps, but I can definitely slow down the series by making <laughs> us play two maps four times. Yeah, but we're going to load into this series four times, but it's only a 2 0. <laughs> and it's not even a draw. So, uh, yeah, you film disconnects. Like I say, this will be a resume from replay just to make sure everything is exactly the same on the start. It's already been begun. Uh, so, we'll get that set up and then we'll get ready to hop into. Uh, uh, resume. I was just hoping that Euthermal's internet is going to recover a little bit so that we can continue this series smoothly. Yeah, I mean, that's the big thing here. Is Euthermal's internet just kaput now? Does he come back? He brings these back. Either now, way. I believe. Huh? He brings these back. You believe? Yeah, I believe. You believe, you believe. You were a th Euthermal fan back in the day, weren't you? I was you good. and him were close and stuff. Yeah, I was good friends with Euthermal, so... Yeah, hard not to be a fan of your friends, right? Absolutely. I mean, he's always been a memer. Always yeah, been a that's, memer. That's very true. Yeah, we obviously is, uh, okay. we went to like a lot. Of, I, I did a lot of like Dutch Starcraft League stuff, so I went to the Netherlands a bunch. And we just had like a same friendship group and so on. So yeah, mm -mm -mm. way back when that was like ten years ago. Now it's actually crazy. I mean, Starcraft. When you really think back, I can go like, oh yeah, to this 2015 was a long time ago, man. And then it's like. No, this this went back to like 2010 for the start of StarCraft 2. I, like you weren't even involved at the start, were you? No, I I was uh, I wasn't even here when the game released. Like I, I wasn't uh, <laughs> didn't know what StarCraft Slacker. was, man. Like I bought StarCraft because some guy in my WoW guild was like, "Yo, you need to get this game so we can play Tower Defense." I didn't even know what Tower Defense <laughs> was. And then um, 
And then uh, I, I got it, and uh, I played, like, two games of tower defense. I was like, this is freaking awful. I can't believe I just spent my money on this game. So I, uh, so then I was like, well, I guess I'll see what the, the rest of the game is about. Here we are, like, however many years later. I think it was, like, late 2011, so, like, 13 years later or something. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, I, I always like it when people are like, who's Demu? And, and it's like, hey, I've been here since the start, you know, like, and the, or, or I, I think, you know, you can get into those online kind of like, oh, should I, should I tell this guy who I am? And it's like, no, I was, somebody else will probably do it. And they do. And they're like, when did you start with Starcraft? It's like 2022, bro. I've been here for two years. And it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you're, you're definitely cooking, bro. You're definitely cooking. Okay. But I mean, the, this game's so rich with history at this point. Um, Euthermal still yet to show back he's up. Just come oh, back wait, on wait, the wait. Channel. Yeah. Oh, no. He is. He, now he oh, up. he's gone again. Oh, he's back again. He's off. He's on. He's on. He's off. This is like whack a mole. Whack a mole. Euthermal, you're here. Get in the game. Whack a thermal. Oh, now Mapu's got disappearing. Wow. Observers just ditching us halfway through the series. Never heard what of What kind such of ship? It, what kind of ship are you running over here, Waddy? Yeah, you know, I'm, not, uh, I'm, I'm not in charge of the observers. <laughs> are you not the producer and director? You think I, you think I have in charge of the observers? I just invite them to the call, man. Follow their camera. <laughs> call, call Blimey Butler. And... Oh, oh. Ooh. In this downtime, just heard my little boy. Oh, babe, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that, that is the, the time to get food. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, apologies about that team. My little boy went to the eye doctor today, and uh, I'll let you know that everything is indeed fine, but uh, it's a slight bit unprofessional. Oh, good, mate. There we go. Are we still on camera, Wardy? Yeah, we're on camera. But you're, you're uh -huh. cropped, so actually, they saw nothing. <gasps> fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I saw it in the score screen. Oi, 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 oi. Oh, yeah, oh, I guess I this is um, picking random races allowed. If a rematch is appointed, players may be forced to stick to the same race as the original match. Please. What? OK, so that's that's the debate. <laughs> so apparently, mm -hmm. so apparently if you're random and you DC and the rematch has to be played, you have to play the same race again. But it's a <laughs> But why, why aren't we just resuming from replay? Because Lambo saw the race in the score screen, I guess? I'm Is not that... sure. Like, surely we, we, like, it doesn't matter how far in you are, you resume from replay, no? I, I'd Wait. imagine so. I, I'm not really sure what the decision making is here. That's interesting. You All right. I mean, it's obviously so kind of these rules that have been made, <laughs> never really been kind of set on. I think Lambo said it's okay. If, if we just redo it entirely and we just... I tell you what, Lambo yeah. is Lambo Lambo's a king, today. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely is. Um, <laughs> but it just shows you how... How... How new, how unrandom we are within regards to, like, StarCraft 2, right? Like, race switching in general is... It's... I know it's far more a thing in um, Brood War, where it's like, all right, I play ZVP... I play ZVT, but ZVZ, I'm not going to touch. I'm going to be Terran against Zerg, for example. Like, mm, yeah. there was quite a lot of that stuff going on. Whereas in, in StarCraft 2, I mean, we had a little bit of Reyna with his Protoss and stuff, but it, it's never been constantly flowing like that. Yep. No, it's... Um, apparently, uh, we have to follow the rules. He has to play Terran. Boy. Uh, but then I don't understand why, uh, and I don't understand why we have to make the game new instead of just resuming from replay. Hmm. Yeah, Lambo's coming in here again, Lambro, dude. So right now, the yeah, the situation. <laughs> this is this is an interesting. This one I'm new to. Yeah, I no, I'm I'm, I'm fascinated to. as an like obviously I run a bunch of tournaments so. I would, uh, I don't know what I would do, but uh, I don't understand why you would, like, in my eyes, you would, I obviously it sucks because Lambo saw the race, but you're already 40 seconds mm. in the game, right? So, like, at least initial builds have been chosen, like hatchery first or pool first, etc., right? So, 
Yeah, that looks, that looks gonna go. I'm interesting though. So yeah, Euthum is gonna be forced to regain with uh, Terran. Very interesting, because yeah, if you go to the specific of it, his race was random. Um, yeah, but the the specific rule says uh, apparently. So the the rule says if you are playing random, you cannot. You have to then play the race you were assigned at the start of the game. Mm, 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 mm. That's what I mean. But like, like I think that rules kind of fine. Like that, that's not what's interesting. I just don't understand why we then don't resume from replay. Oh. No? Yeah, I, I, I'm with you as well. I, that, that's I what's guess... interesting. I think the one thing that this rules out. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is, a, this is a great series, man. I think the one thing that this rules out is the potential for players to have some say on if they thought they got a bad race with random and trying to up their chances. You know what I mean? But then why would you play random? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, don't 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 get yeah. me wrong. Like a referee's life is to make their life easier, and if this kept cropping up with a uh -huh. player that played random and kept on disconnecting you know then get rid of it but lambro being lambro and you know he, he's allowed a regame he's allowed he's just allowed you thermal to do what he wants and you thermal he's been forced by the admins to pick terror in this game and now we've got a tvc on our hands and lambo again going with the pool first here yep uh, lambo top left thermal bottom right is that lambo sticking to the build he would have used anyways if it was random I think it might be. Oh my goodness! Does this, does this gentlemanness just show no bounds? Apparently not. I mean, Lambo was down oh. to do whatever. He was like, he was so chill. He's like, I really don't mind. Let's just, you know, let's just play. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, like both these guys, they they prepared for this today. Uh, they're both here, one one uh, a piece. Mm -hmm. That whatever happens at this point, it's just like you know. It happens. They're both dealing with the same situation, eh? Yeah. I mean, just unfortunately, you know, it's so funny as well because he lagged out. We're like, well, that's the best time to lag out. Turns out it really wasn't Ben. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe two minutes later would have been a better time to lag out. <laughs> yeah, super damn strange. Super strange. All right. So, SB Scout, it was kind of after the barracks, I do believe. Gets to see that it is a pool first. And. We have to mention that Euthermal's made his production on his low ground here. So it's the barracks, the factory down on the low ground. It was also reactor first of all things for him. So I want to say a little bit greedy, uh, but it's kind of in, like it, it's a nice build against uh, Zerg in general, this kind of thing. And you definitely have a few very interesting follow ups with like Hellbats, uh, things like that. Good for catching an Overlord. If the Overlord does go down, it's generic path but not going to be the case today yeah you them always likes these kind of like eco openings and then obviously hitting like a big timing a bit further down the line and stuff i feel like that's always something he's been kind of a fan of and, and you know you was always such a creative player as well like he was one of the guys he looks for the overlord here but it's actually over to the right side so good adjustment from lambo realized in the last game that you was trying to kill the overlord uh, we're gonna go double reactor by the way so uh, that's kind of funky as well. Uh, I was about to say, one of the builds Euthermal came up with was the kind of like the 14 marine drop with like a mine, where you basically go without stim as like a predecessor to the 211. So you just go 14 marines, a mine, and two medivacs, and you just basically hit before 211. So if your opponent thinks it's a 211, it kind of hits like really, uh, like it hits that like little sooner and they're not quite prepared. But obviously, you don't have stim mm. or anything. So he's always very creative with those builds. As we get ourselves going into this game too and waiting to see exactly what it's going to be. That second reactor about to finish and the starport is going to swap to it. Nice scout from Lambo. He gets to see that there. And I think it's going to exactly line up to what you talked about. And <clears throat> the first player I saw do this kind of thing was Gumiho, actually. And this was during the 16-bit era where like you had this and then the follow-up would be like a, a tank drop afterwards with the Marines. Like very, very cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right that Euthermal has been good about divvying up his builds like there's also a period of time where against protoss you'd go reactor marines like four or six and then you'd reactor out like two hellions behind it and just attack with just that like six marines two hellions and euthermal was very big on that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. it's going to be a fusion reactor behind it as well like this is 
Yeah. Your thermal's absolutely been to the lab. He's cooking up some cool plays, uh, uh, absolutely entertaining us. This is actually a, a like genuinely an old school U thermal thing, like the 4D Marine drop and then Fusion Core. Sometimes he plays just straight up mech behind this. There's always going to be BCs. Not sure if he will go mech beyond the BCs, but uh, yeah, cool to see. Just U thermal when he does play Terran still has that little bit of a uh, little bit of something to it. No, yeah, definitely is. I mean, so far Lambo's <laughs> he's not taken damage thus far he's got more than enough queens he's got eight on the field right now 34 links and hellions are being produced your thermal's still on just two gases by the way just two so i mean the the level of tech behind this is not big and it's going to be a lot of hellions a lot of marines very very interesting out of him like I, i'm not sure it's gonna work but it's it's fun to see yeah, I mean, what he's able to do right now is apply a lot of pressure at the front. The problem is the queen count is so good, right? We've got so many of these queens mm -hmm. here. So they're going to be able to keep everything else pushed back for a little while. And and that just gives you the chance to kind of defend this pretty comfortably. Ling Bane comes up. The question will be, was that BC going to be a surprise at all? Even if it is, Cyclones. there's a lot of uh, queens. And yeah, armory coming up as well, mate. We are seeing some real beautiful stuff right now here from you, Thermal. <laughs> and Cyclones. Like, that is so wild to me like so damn wild I, I i don't know if this is something that he's practiced a lot of um i i just don't but this is fun man like when, when you sit down and play starcraft 2 and it's like can you do just this with like no tech whatsoever on your units like no stim combat shield plus one like it's just not there and i'm just gonna have a ton of units like i think he's gonna get absolutely bopped but i think it's fun to see yeah, no, well, let's see how this push goes. We do not have a Rotron yet, but of course, we do have Balins available, so some kind of splash able to help out here. And as we go pressing forwards, the Ling Bane Queen getting set up. The Cyclone's still locking on the Bane Lanes. Taking some connections in. Marines going down. And we just have ourselves the BC still <laughs> fighting here, but man, the damage output from Lambo is just too good. And it feels like Uthermal again is just not killing anything, right? Like, the Queens are going to get this BC because it cannot teleport away. That's GG's. That is the game. And that is that. Tell you what, that was 13 queens on the field. Like, Lambo, 